Hey guys, welcome back to Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. I'm Shannon, and today on the show, we're taking a look at the 1995 classic Spider Man and Batman. The story is entitled Disordered Minds. It was written by J.M. DeMatteis, uh, penciled by Mark Bagley, inked by Scott Hanna and Mark Farmer, uh, and then there's some of the other credits. Now, <clears throat> I've always enjoyed, enjoyed Mark Bagley's uh, drawing style, his artistic style. Um, it, even though it dates this comic quite a bit, because you don't really see this style in Spider-Man comics anymore. Um, I've always enjoyed his style. Uh, I believe he did the Clone Saga uh and several others, and that's around the time that I got introduced to Spider-Man comics. Uh, I mean, I've always been a Spider-Man fan, but that's when I really came into Spider-Man comics, and I just love his style. Now, <clears throat> as you can see, the cover is a pressed cover, and the cover is really nice. I really like the uh, design they've got going on here. Uh, you got the bat signal inside of spider web, uh, kind of combining the spider signal and bat signal together. Uh, as you can see, Bagley did not put trunks on Batman, uh, which actually looks really good. I love the color of Batman's costume, and this is pretty much how his costume looks throughout the... Uh, throughout the comic. Uh, I, I wish they would kind of bring back this design. Uh, the ears are pretty tall. You know, they they kind of meet with the 89 Batman costume a little bit. But I overall, I really love the coloring and design of Batman's costume. I love the way Bagley draws Spider-Man. Very very slender but muscular uh, very athletic looking but he doesn't have the build of some of other superheroes he's more of a he has more of a gymnast look which he needs uh, the inking or the uh, coloring is done very well I love it the shading is perfect uh, I wish Marvel and DC for that matter would bring back some of the artists, colorists, and inkers from the early 90s and let them do the work again uh, on the comics that really made them famous. Bring Bagley back to Spider-Man. Uh, I'm not sure when the last time he was, uh, when the last time was that he did a Spider-Man comic, but he is perfect for Spider-Man. Uh, I, I would read more Spider-Man comics now if the design was the way it was back in the 90s. Uh, and as I said, it is a pressed cover, as you can see there. Uh, and inside the cover, uh, we do not have to visit a madhouse to find disordered minds. Our planet is the mental institution of the universe. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. And as you can see there, it's Stanley presents disordered minds. This is the Marvel adaptation of a uh, Spider-Man Batman crossover. Uh, the other one was called Batman Spider-Man. That's the DC version. This, of course, is the Marvel version. Back in the 90s when companies did crossovers like this, each company would do their own version. Like with Spawn and Batman. One, the image was Spawn Batman. The DC was Batman Spawn. And each company portrays the other company's hero a little bit differently than what their home company would. Like with uh, Spawn Batman, they really made, image really made uh, Batman really gritty, incredibly ruthless. You know, he threw a battering into Spawn's face. Uh, that's where he, that's unofficially where Spawn got the shoelace face. In between credit uh, comics, it was 
in continuity reported as Harry Houdini is the one that caused it, but actually that comic, uh, Spawn Batman, was done in between issues of Spawn, and that's the that's unofficially where the shoelace face Spawn came from, was the Spawn Batman comic. You know, uh, Spawn said, let's bury the hatchet, and Batman said, bury this, and threw the battering at his face. But anyway, I digress. In this, the story isn't that great. It starts out great, but it really, it doesn't end that great. It's very anticlimactic. In this issue, it's uh, Spider-Man and Batman are forced to team up to take on the Joker and Carnage, which you would think would be an epic showdown. Now, in DC's version, Batman Spider-Man, uh, they team up to take on Ra's al Ghul and the Kingpin. I don't know why they would do that. You would think it would be Black Mask and the Kingpin if they wanted to do it that way. I would have actually loved to see DC's take on Carnage and Joker. See if they could do it better than Marvel did. Like I said, this was very anticlimactic. Most of the story was really good. I loved how they depicted it. Uh, I'm not going to go through it too much because as you can see, there is almost nowhere on that binding. And I would like to keep it that way. And of course, Comixology does not have these crossovers as digital comics. Let me show you this. As you can see, this is when Peter Parker had his mullet. <laughs> and that's the look I associate with Peter, Par Peter, uh, Peter Parker the most, is that look there. That's the same look he had in Maximum Carnage and in the Clone Saga and all this other stuff. Mary Jane Watson Parker, uh, that's her perfect look. It opens with Peter having a nightmare about the night that Uncle Ben was shot and killed by the burglar. And the burglar kind of transmorphs into the Joker. And that's what causes him to wake up uh, and go swinging off. Uh, Bruce Wayne is having a similar dream about the night that his parents were killed. Only the killer transmorphs into carnage and that's what causes him to wake up. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, shows the similarities between the two characters. Uh, and then we get into Ravencroft where carnage is being held and he ends up getting free somehow it's never explained how but then this uh, this doctor uh, decides to do a uh, very high-tech lobotomy on him and put a microchip in his brain which causes him to go docile and then they go to Arkham where they plan on doing the same thing to the Joker but needless to say, as soon as the microchip got planted into Cletus Cassidy's brain, uh, the symbiote actually uh, overrode it. It made it not work. So he's been playing this entire time. And so we get Batman, who's in disguise as one of the guards, rips off his face to reveal Batman. Very nice look for Batman there. Love the look. Uh, his first meetup with Carnage. And his first time meeting Spider-Man. Very cool. Love, it. Love that coloring. That coloring is amazing. I don't know how well it's coming off on camera, but that coloring is amazing. I love that coloring style. Uh, so anyway, Batman tells Spider-Man to get out of his town, uh, if nothing else, for his own safety. <laughs> uh, because Gotham has her own personality, he says. Uh, Carnage, he pretty much kidnaps the Joker, uh, sends a small strand of his symbiote into the Joker's brain through his nose to deactivate the microchip and bring him back to his... Uh, his crazy self and he's surprised at what he's wearing a normal suit and so he <laughs> grabs carnage's claw and shreds his suit to look more his style i guess um, 
Anyway, then Batman tries studying up on Carnage to find all everything he can about him and decides he's actually he's going to need help after all. And Spider-Man on his way swinging through town trying to decide if he should leave or not. Uh, he comes across a uh, thug trying to kill some lady, trying to rape and kill her, I guess. It's insinuated anyway. He webs him up. Batman shows up and says, uh, get in, please. Uh, which should show you how different two companies can uh, can write certain characters. Batman would never say please, even if you know, even if he needs someone's help. Uh, he he's just that's not him. That's not his personality. Uh, then we come into Joker's hideout. He's telling Carnage about his plan. And Carnage decides that he doesn't like Joker's plan. He doesn't like the whole plotting to eventually kill everyone slow and painfully. That's not his style. He would much rather do it personally and savor it. And so Joker escapes and blows up his hideout with Carnage in it. Uh, Spider-Man and Batman show up. They discover the ruins. Uh, but Carnage has put his symbiote around a corpse or something like that. Spider-Man realizes it. Uh, Batman says, I remember that uh, the Maximum Carnage affair where he did something similar. Uh, so Carnage attacks and then Joker comes back and says I'm not going to let you uh, kill Batman uh, that's my job that's my Batman this is my town if anyone's going to destroy it it's going to be me uh, he threatens to release his virus uh, Carnage Cletus Cassidy ends up getting scared and it loses control of his symbiote which leads to Batman getting the upper hand and just easily doing away with Carnage. And then Spider-Man tracks down the Joker and easily gets rid, uh, finishes him. Batman and Spider-Man end things in a handshake, pretty much. Uh, that's about it. The back, uh, we got Spider-Man. He is beloved. Or his beloved uncle's life stolen by a desperate burglar's bullet. A murder he could have prevented. Peter Parker learned that with great power comes great responsibility and has vowed to use his superhuman abilities to ensure that no one else would suffer because he failed to act. A uh, little trivia here. In the original comic, Uncle Ben never once told Peter with great power comes great responsibility. That was added in later. Uh, the first person to utter those words was Peter himself. With great power comes great responsibility. It was later revealed to have came from Uncle Ben. But in the original comics, Uncle Ben never once told Peter with great power comes great responsibility. So anyway, then we got Batman here. His childhood forever shattered when he witnessed the brutal slaying of his parents. Bruce Wayne trained his body and mind to human perfection, becoming a dark knight obsessed with justice and determined to free the knight from the criminal predators that infest it. Two frighteningly similar tragedies, two very different heroes. Now these two must join forces against the combined evil of two of their most nightmarish foes, the maniacal clown prince of crime, the Joker, and the bloodthirsty symbiote serial killer, Carnage. And before the battle ends, both Spider-Man and Batman will be forced to confront their deepest, most hidden fears head on as they stalk through the dark corridors of disordered minds. Uh, so as you can see, like I said, great concept, great artwork, great beginning, but it leaves you wanting. It's not, it's not the Spider-Man Batman story we deserve. It's not even the Spider-Man Batman story we needed. They should have really made this story a little bit thicker and 
really gave credit to Joker and Carnage. Did them justice. Did the characters justice. And had them go up against Spider-Man and Batman in the best way possible. Maybe even doing a story along the lines of Maximum Carnage. Only having it with Joker and Carnage. Sadly, they didn't. Maybe eventually they'll they'll redo the story and we'll get the Spider-Man Batman story we deserve. And ne- desperately, desperately need artwork. I'll give a ten out of ten. Penciling, inking, coloring, ten out of ten all the way. Story uh, first. Let's go with the writing. The writing style for the most part. The dialogue between the two characters is pretty good except for Batman saying please for one. He kind of makes a couple jokes. It's not really Batman's style. Uh, Mainly he makes a couple jokes with Alfred which sometimes he does in Batman comics but I don't really see him doing it here. Uh, He should be more broody in this comic because he's going up against both Carnage and the Joker which would put a lot on somebody's plate. So dialogue between the two characters, between Batman and Spider-Man, as well as the dialogue between Joker and Carnage, I would probably give maybe a seven out of 10 for dialogue. Uh, The story itself starts out as a 10 out of 10, but it ends up being more like a four or five out of 10. Very disappointing ending, not happy with it. So overall, I'll give this comic a six out of 10. If you want to add it to your collection, it would be great for the collection simply for the artwork alone. But if you want it for the collection, for the story, to read it, I really wouldn't waste the money. Uh, I I hate to say that because it's got such great artwork. Great possibilities that just didn't come to fruition. Uh, Eventually, I do plan on getting Batman Spider-Man, the DC Comics version. And once I do, I'll read it and I'll review that. And we'll see which one I like better. If you like this story, comment down below. Let me Tell me what you thought. If you didn't like the story, let me know in the comments below. Tell me what you liked, what you didn't like, what you thought the best part of the story was. Honestly, I thought the best part of the story was the beginning. It had so much great possibilities that just didn't like go anywhere. And then, like I said, also, the other best part of the story was the artwork. Artwork is amazing. That is my style of artwork. Love the way Spider-Man was done. Love the way Batman was done. Love the way Carnage was done. I think they could have done a little bit better job with Joker. Because uh, starting out, they started him out wearing kind of a clown costume in his with his regular face. No, no extra clown face paint or whatever. Uh, and then they had him in that brown suit and they had him shred the suit while wearing it. It made him seem more like a jester than a joker. Eventually they did put him into his regular cost, regular purple or violet outfit, which was great. But I don't really think they hit the nail on the head with his design throughout the comic. Uh, the face was good. I'll give it that. His build and everything was good. There was just something missing with the Joker. So anyway, this video has gone on long enough. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, Click like, leave a comment down below, and share it with your friends. Take care, geeks. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you hit the subscribe button right there so you can stay up to date on all things geek culture. Also, make sure you check out one of these two playlists on the side for more videos just like the one you just watched. I'm Shannon for Comic Getting TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Take care, geeks.